for the imbeciles, you know, just just being preemptive for the imbeciles. Why don't you just play it? Well, one would get a copyright strike if they play it all the way through. That's number one. The number two, if you want to listen to it all the way through, goofball, just click that link and go watch it all the way through. We're here to get the work, the education. You dig? Let's get it. Where you at? I'm gonna pull up. We're gonna put on the camera, and I'll. Bet. First off, first off, full stop. Uh, Whack is like 80 years old, 80, 90. He like 80, 90 years old. Um, wow, you still pulling up on people? What is this whole talk about? I'm on pull up. Well, I'm on pull. Where you at? I'm on pull up. We gonna get it on camera. Whoa. Uh, El Snitcho. I'm on pull up, and we gonna get it on camera for the feds so we can have it in court. But I'm also terrified of you. I just want to throw that out there because he's the most dangerous kind of nut. I'm going to tell you what kind. He's like a, a, a Sammy the Bull Gravano, which is to say he can commit heinous crimes with no consequence because he works for the boys. You dig? He works for the feds, the, the police department, LAPD, whatever you want to call it. So he can do dirt and do crime and then not do time. Oh, that's a dangerous person. Oh, that's dangerous. I wouldn't want to mess with him. I'm terrified. Of and somebody in the comments called uh, Whack 100 Hamburger Face. That was not very nice. Hurt my feelings. It was just so mean. So mean. Called him Hamburger Face. Wow, Jesus. That is not cool. On Clubhouse, I never got on it. Uh, you know, It just seemed like, uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I was in high school, you could do three-way calling, which I never really did. The only time I was on a three-way call is when you're, you got your main piece and you've been cheating on her and you got busted, you heard me, and she met the other girl and then she going to call you on three-way on the low low and the other girl is sitting there silent, listen to it, and, and as soon as you say something, she just come out, see, I did it. and you're like, whoa, I didn't even know I was on three-way right now. And then the, the one that called you had told the other one not to say anything, just to listen. But because she's abroad, she can't control her emotions. So she didn't just jump out saying crazy stuff anyways. That's the only time I've been on three-way calls, which is to say I don't have fond memories of three-way calling. You dig? But that's what Clubhouse seems like, a big three-way call. But here we go. We have adult males all on Clubhouse. I, I don't know. I don't know what the business model is. I don't know if you can get paid. I really have any, haven't had any interest to get paid in that way. But here they are. I will beat the fuck out your little bitch ass. And if you keep running your mouth, if you keep running your mouth, I'm going to run you out that building. So uh, he said, I'm going to beat the F out your little B-I-T-C-H-A-S-S. -S. We're in a spelling bee here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, in every country on the planet Earth, in every city, in every language, uh, that translates to disrespect. So if somebody tells you that, uh, that means that they have no respect. They absolutely want the fade. They ain't scared at all like Bone Crusher. And uh, yeah, and if you're a street dude, you should probably take that as disrespect. And then there should be some escalation of tension right there. So that's basically um, WAC 100 says sharp, use a bitch. And uh, I want that fade. Let's throw them hands. And let's see how Sharp reacts to this, uh, being a, a street in IGGA. Your mouth, if you keep running thing your thing mouth, I'm going to run mouth. you out that building. Oh, just side note, like, I personally don't like that whole, if you keep running your mouth, because it, it's just so disrespectful. It's like how you would talk to a broad or how a, a, a single black mother uh, with no sense of true discipline or emotional control would talk to her kids. Keep running your mouth. Keep running your mouth. Are you going to keep running your mouth? Effects said could have all been avoided if Sharp realized early this whole interaction was pointless and just hung up. And now he's punked by threats online. Looking fresh as hell, by the way, Marquette. Appreciate Sunday service. It. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. You dig? I got I got the, uh, you know, watch face is black. Uh, I think it's Sudanese. You dig? I think it's Sudanese. Anyways. Um, and the sweatshirt is linked and it's about to be linked in the chat. Appreciate it. MDB label. Yeah, get your drip up in a real way. Um, so the thing is that we have to acknowledge a lot of these people who are street guys, they're street guys because they're imbeciles. They couldn't get out of the streets, right? That's number one. Uh, number two, if you've ever been locked up for any amount of time, uh, jail is one of the worst places because you have a lot of dysfunctional personalities. A lot of people have not been able to get over their 
trauma. A lot of people with low IQ, you look at the educational attainment rates in prison is quite low, right? They go in there being illiterate much of the time. So you're dealing with a lot of imbeciles. But what you notice consistently is that in prison, it's like high school. It's like, it's like a lot of gossip, you know, when people are in jail, whether it's juvenile hall all the way up through uh, significant, uh, you know, super max prisons. It's a gossip, man. All you have time to sit around and talk like broads, right? It's not a whole ton to do after you've done working out and extorting your neighbors for their uh, cup of noodles, right? So uh, anyways, yeah, like a lot of these street dudes are also uh, imbeciles, gossip broads, they're low IQ, and they find their relevance in life from being able to intimidate or exact violence upon others. That's where they get their sense of power and self-esteem because they can't get it in any other legitimate field, right? We're particularly talking about the LA gang culture because their gangs aren't even about money half the time. You look at Asian gangs, you look at uh, Mexican mafia, you look at Italians, their gangs are about profit. You look at Los Angeles-based gangs, their gangs are all you know about fashion choices. Is, is he wearing blue? No, there's no way that's blue. He's wearing blue. It's silliness. Keep, keep on running your mouth. I'm gonna run you out that building, homie. You better, you better humble yourself. Hey. So this is a really important piece that he mentions right there. He said, "Keep running your mouth. I'm gonna run you out of that building." And the reason that's important is because now we've went from the realm of conversation and idle threats potentially. So now I'm getting specific enough that you know that I know where you're at. And based on that, we got all kind of options. And that's why when you saw me uh, make my video about Adam 22 being a hoe, or I should say Adolf 22, I was like, bro, I was in your building. Like, you could have came and hollered at me. If you had an issue with me, you could have talked to me. If anybody had an issue with me, they could have came and hollered at me. It was just me and my mans there. You heard me? It was just us two there. Y'all could have came and got your issue. Yeah, I would have been serving it up like a cafeteria lady. Yeah, old black lady with the hairnet. Yeah, I was ready to give out work. Ain't nobody have an issue. Everybody was high fives and friendly. And I think that's what Wack is saying right now, which is like, bro, little buddy, I know where you're at. Yeah, we can get things going. And that's a meaningful thing. That's a, that's a meaningful threat. And, and it's all factual because I know where the studio is. Wack know where the studio is. A lot of people know where the studio is. Go ahead. Major Mind and Soul said, just received my Hustle Day tank yesterday. Hey. It is cold. I think that was pretty quick because I that feel like you just ordered it. Yeah. Absolutely. SassinBrand.com. SassinBrand.com. Log in, boss up. I, I would also like to report that I'm super scary and I'm a turbo nerd and a square. So please don't ask for beef with me. And I'm turning down all fades for the record, especially ones with the police carrying on. Uh, you will get your ass ran the fuck up out of there. You are from San. Diego, bro, you are lost. Uh, just side note real quick in case you were wondering. Um, much of my family is from San Diego. I was born in San Diego, raised in Los Angeles. Uh, so San Diego also has Pyrus, in case you didn't know. San Diego has Pyrus. San Diego has neighborhood crips. I got uh, family members uh, from neighborhood crip in San Diego. The ones that then got shot before, you know, they're really active out there. So San Diego is a real place. Has a lot of affluence, um, but if you're black or Latino, you probably live in the part that's not affluent. And San Diego is a lot more gritty than people realize. So any if somebody from San Diego, like for sure, you know, show them some respect. And people know San Diego is with the ish. El Cajon Boulevard is, uh, you know, for a lot of peas, El Cajon Boulevard. I don't know if the if it's still jumping now, but it used to really be jumping. Oh, wait, what are you saying about Dago? Nigga, I'm saying you 189. No, you okay, so notice how Sharp is trying to dodge right now. So basically, uh, Wack came direct. Much respect for that. He came direct at him, and then Sharp starts sidestepping. What you saying about Dago? What you saying about Dago? No, sir, we're not talking about Dago. We're talking about you, sir. We're talking about you, and in fact, we're asking for fades. You can accept the fade or turn the fade down. That's all we really need to know right now. Do you want the fade or you do not want the fade? And if you don't want the fade, I'm going to need you to just say straight up, I am scared. That no friends piece is that. That's real life out here. It just is what it is. I'm not trying to slap fives with nobody, man. You saying about Dago? I'm saying I can pull 50 of them. I'm telling you, I can pull. Listen, this is what I'm telling you. you saying I can about pull 50 Dago niggas to a sister and running your ass out that building. Now, that was super hood. He said, I am saying that I could pull 50 people from yo city to assist me in violating you. That's gangster. That's boss talk right there. And the question is, you know, where does that rank on the truth meter? I think that ranks pretty high. And I'll tell you why. You'll find that consistently um, cash rules everything around me. Cream Wu-Tang told you way back. 
So when you got enough bread, yeah, you could do a lot of things. And one thing about gangs is that they are reasonably well networked. They're not organized, but they're reasonably well networked, which is to say that, you know, if you connected with, you know, West Side Denver Lane, you might be also connected with uh, Treetop. You might also be connected with Baby Insane. You might also be connected with, and I could go on endlessly. So everybody got a cousin that stays somewhere and, you know, they could link it up. And if you got the bread, you can make a lot of things happen. So gangs are well networked, but they're not well organized and they're not honorable organizations. I'll tell you, I'll give you a quick example. I have one homie, uh, Damu. And so we just posted up me, him and a couple other cats from, from the neighborhood, his name, his gang. And this one dude pulls up on the set. He fresh out. Right. And there's like, who's you? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm baby tiny Mike, whoop de whoop. Like he's saying his hood name. I'm baby tiny Mike, killer this, kill, whoop. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay, for sure, though. Uh, you ain't from my hood, though. He's like, no, I got put on when I was locked up. So and so put me on. And there's like, there's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we know so and so. Yeah, we know so and so, but, but we don't know you, though, blood. Blood, who's you? Nah, blood, you got to get put on for real, though. Like you got put on in there, you got put on inside. That's some whole other shit. You need to get put on outside. And then the homie turned to me he's like, hey, I'm about to put blood on right now, which is basically this. If, to decode that for you is basically this. You have people who are savages, not like the Internet guys like I'm an alpha male. No, people who are actually savages. They, they thrive and enjoy violence. And the homie who's a real goon turned to me like, yeah, I'm about to put blood on right now, which is basically saying we're going to jump him and beat the snot out of him for no good reason, even though we know he already was formally jumped onto our gang. He's already been officially went through our process, our violent, unpre unpleasant process to get put on our hood. He already did that. And we believe him. But we're going to do it again because I like violence. The homie basically said, nah, we're going to put him on again, which is to say you're supposed to be a part of our gang, a part of our organization, our neighborhood, our family. But we're going to beat the snot out of you unnecessarily just for fun, just for fun. And they proceeded to do just that and beat the snot out this boy. Now, you might say, well, well quit. Why didn't he turn down the fade? The kid who was already on the hood and he already got put on the hood. Why didn't he just say, nah, I ain't, I ain't with it or I ain't going through it? Well, one thing you don't do in the hood. You don't turn down a fade. No, that's not what you do in general. You ain't even got to be a gangster. You could be a regular square or a nerd. No, you don't turn down a fade. Your mama even tell you that. Oh, no, don't turn down no fade. So if you're a gangster and somebody's like, yeah, you know, we're going to put you back on. Your gangster protocol. Blood, what? Blood, what? Nigga? It's on mamas. Take your, yeah, yeah. Take your stuff off and squabble up. Yeah, that's the protocol. Yeah, that's the protocol. And afterward. Act like it ain't have no effect on you. Yeah, act like it didn't matter. Like it was fun. Yeah, that's what street gangs are about. Complete ignorance. How much money did they make from that? Zero dollars. How many drug sales, drug deals, drug connects, plugs did they get from that process? None. It was just idiotic violence. That's what LA street gangs are mostly about. Okay, we have Teddy Fresh sent $50 on Cash App. Baller alert. Said peace to the saints. Appreciate all you do. Appreciate you. Shout out. And I want you guys to know this is different than the, the BS that you guys hear. You got some? Yeah, Kevin is back on Cash App. He said bad news is an old school wrestler from the hood. <laughs> That's what's up. I used to have a homie. He's a rapper. His name was Bad News. Bar is crazy, but he ended up on dope. You dig? We used to hustle when we was young boys. You could read about this in the black box. We used to hustle together. Smart kid, but he started, you know, he started using the getting high on, on his own supply. Then it escalated. It's all bad, but it used to have bars. And um, yeah, I've lived in Chicago. I've lived in Southside Chicago. You dig? In, in the hood. LA street gangs and Chicago street gangs are radically different. They don't compare. I'm not saying Chicago's not violent. But you could get bodied in Chicago. You generally get bodied because you're a part of something or because you had an issue and they, they execute the issue. I respect it. In L.A., you can get bodied literally for no reason, literally for the fact that you're just wearing this and they don't like that. Or it's like, blood, who is you? Like you can get killed just because of the following phrase. Blood, who is you? Blood, who your big, who your big homie? Like you get killed for that. Like not having the right answer to that. I didn't see people walk up on somebody like, hey, cut, where you from, cut? 
and just say the wrong thing. You ain't even got to say an opposing hood. You ain't got to say, just say the wrong answer. Huh? And here's the thing. There's really no good answer to that question. Where are you from? That's an aggression. There's no correct answer. Low key, you might as well just start swinging. And by the way, fuck Charleston White. Side note, just fuck Charleston White. You ain't from L.A. Don't speak up on L.A. gangs. Don't speak up on L.A. business. You didn't grow up in it. You don't have friends who've been in, involved in that. Your grandma wasn't involved in that. Your mama, your daddy wasn't involved in that. You don't know shit about that, okay? Sit down and shut the fuck up. I don't appreciate it because it's like, I know people who live and die by that. And I grew up in that unfortunate environment. You're just a foreign ass nigga that, that finds it interesting and wants to make a buck talking about things you don't know nothing about. And I wish the LA gangs were a little bit realer because the way you disrespect uh, Nipsey, honestly, if they was really with it and they had respect for their big homie and for their OG, somebody should have slapped your helmet off, boy. And I ain't saying that he don't say things that are real. He does. But don't speak up on business that ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah, I lived in Southside Chicago, but you don't hear me talking about the GDs and the Vice Lords. Huh? Yeah, I lived in Baltimore, even hustled in Baltimore. But you don't hear me talking about Baltimore gangs. Huh? Yeah, you'll see me on, on Pennsylvania Avenue in a real way. But you don't hear me speaking up on their business. That's why I tell you a lot of these people are suckers. These organizations are, 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 are nothing. Sassin or nothing. Go ahead. Ricardo says tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Carry on. They don't have no honor. That's, that's my thing. They don't have no honor. You see, people say snitches get stitches. Why is Takashi 6 9 still walking around doing interviews? Saw him just recently on an interview, uh, old, old uh, footage with Andrew Tate and um, some other people just having a good old time. Oh, New York is soft. New York is soft. I guess you can't get killed as a result of snitching unless you're black, apparently. They kill their own, huh? But they let the the little white kid with the with the rainbow hair just move around, do whatever you want to do. I know people are in the chat like, no, he's Mexican. Ah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But you get my point, though. You get my point, though. Um, Because uh, the, the Mexicans I know are honorable people with integrity. Um, he was kind of like playing it like a white kid. And what I mean is like, you got white kids in the suburbs, they'll listen to hip hop music and then they'll start like dressing like what they're seeing in music videos. That's kind of like what Takashi did, like off some suburban white kid type, like culture vulture stuff, but he did it effectively. That's because black people are so ignorant. You hear me? We're the only black, we're the only people who will allow others to come into our culture, steal it, commercialize it and dominate it. It's hilarious. Okay. None of the above is back on PayPal and said for the epic rant, LOL. Let's work. Let's work. Carry on. Oh, yeah. Back to Sharp getting punked. Hey, it's call what I'm call saying. Dang old niggas right now to NC. Boy, you don't want to play with me like that, bro. Oh, called him boy. Like he was the slave master. So Sharp said, call Dago people right now. See, that was a bit goofy because you could be from any hood. It's big enough that there's people you don't know and there's people who for sure don't like you, especially if you've accumulated any amount of money, success and power or influence. Right. You you probably go to anywhere I ever touched down. You find some some nut who doesn't like me. Maybe I slayed they girl skeet skeet on a baby mama. You dig? Yeah. Maybe I, I came through like uh, looking super clean huh, and looked at them like they wasn't a damn thing. Yeah. Ooh, who knows? But you can find some nut in any place. Life is Brian said, could you do a reaction to Molestiny getting that work on just pearly things by a legal expert regarding the Tate situation? Send me a link. Send me a link. All day, fuck you, call you, call you call do call. not want to play with me. Like, Man, all right, my there's one on the floor that been waiting to call get you. Call. See, that was Hood. He said, number one, you don't want to play with me like that. And I can tell that he has something loaded up. He has what you might call some tricks up his sleeves. And then number two, he said, I got one on the floor that's been waiting to get at you. And I believe that. I really do believe that. And one thing you'll read in my book, The Black Box, you can get that on Amazon or get a low-cost copy on uh, marquetism.com. I recommend it because it'll keep you safe. In that book, I say, never expect uh, that your enemies will not behave as enemies do. I also talk about hierarchy and when you come into a new environment, how everyone's trying to push you to the bottom of the hierarchy unless you assert otherwise. And that anytime you're winning, there's somebody losing and they don't like what you're doing. You dig? If you at the top spot, that means they ain't in it and they trying to get it. Certainly when he says, I know some people on the flow that want to get at you. I believe that. And that can happen. He should take in the black box. I say, take all threats seriously you absolutely should 
and you know somebody's a snake when you ain't never had beef with them and he's like i know somebody i want to get at you oh well why you ain't holler at me about that why you ain't let me know that's crazy see that i don't appreciate sharp's response call him call him and call him so we were already playing three-way phone call right now we're playing high school three-way phone call and you're saying call an additional guy to get him on the line why that's not going to change anything you, you see what i'm saying like we're all still going to be just grown men babbling on the phone like you know gossip girls a, a phone call a, an additional person on the line ain't gonna do nothing what we're talking about right now is now we're in a situation where there's threats and if i was sharp i would feel particularly threatened because number one you're talking to someone who's a gang member one thing i can tell you about gang members is that it's really hard to win against them my good fortune not having been a gang member but i was a hustler and all my homies was gang members you dig so if i got into a situation with a gang member from you know any of the neighborhoods i moved through we catching what's called a friendly fade you dig you know we're gonna throw it from the shoulders but if somebody go down you ain't gonna get stomped out you dig you ain't gonna get jumped it's called a friendly fade what they're on the brink of right now is not a friendly fade which means that you're a stranger we're gonna treat you like an enemy yeah uh if you catch the fair one with whack the fair one uh we can promise you you ain't gonna win yeah, if you catch the fair one and you start winning, somebody's going to jump in. Why? That's how gangs operate. You dig? I remember one time I, I caught a fade. Uh, this big, tall dude. Long story short, you know, he he was just a jealous cat. He pulled up on me like, oh, you think you run? whoop de whoop de whoop And I was like, yeah, actually, I do. I, I didn't think he, he didn't expect me to say that. He's like, you think you run X, Y, and Z? I was like, no, I, actually, I do. And then, you know, he was like, okay, I want my fade. I was like, cool, shoot the fade. So we're shooting the fade. This back in the day, I was wearing a chain, like a little, a little silver link piece, you dig? He throw a punch at me. I, I dodge it, and he rips off the chain in the midst of the punch, right? Then he picks up the chain, hits me in the face with the chain. Yeah, chain hit me in the eye, and I crouch down, and then he basically tackles me. He gets on top of me and starts trying to rain down punches. This is before MMA even came out, you dig? I pull into his chest, right? And so he's trying to rain down the punches, but they're really missing. Now, at that point, up to that point, it was a fair fade. I get hit in the face with a chain, which now you didn't introduce the weapon. That's not quite fair. Ain't nobody jumping. We still keeping a gangster. But then at the point which I'm on the ground and he's trying to rain down punches on me, which none of them landed, at that point, my people was like, nah, we good on this fair one. You dig it ain't fair no more. They pushed him off, and they was about to start putting the beats on him. I get up. I was like, nah, nah, we good. We, we going to keep it even. And then I did the rest of the work. But here's the point. Ain't no way I was about to lose that fade. No. Before I lose that fade, all my wolves would have jumped in. All his people would have jumped in. Gang shit, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you're not in a gang or you ain't associated with a gang, you just a random-ass street pimp. Nah, you're going to have problems because you can't win against a gang member. That's why they have the gang. So you might as well sit down and shut up. Okay? That should be crazy. Oh, it says sold out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, we didn't screw that up. I got to go fix that. I can fix it. I yeah, go ahead and sure. fix that. We're sorry yes. about the folks trying to um uh, buy the backpack briefcase said it was sold out. What's that? Yeah. Um, On Cash App, we have Jose said, WAC 100 video of him butt naked on YouTube. Uh, and then he sent another cash app and said it's a blurred video of his butt, but he naked. LOL. Yeah, look, that's that's some whole other stuff. Um, hey man, do what you do. I ain't getting into it. That's his own personal business right there. But I do want to be clear that with regards to Sharp, if he did shoot the fair one with whack and he started winning, somebody's gonna jump in. I know it. I don't even need to know Wack's friends. I don't need to know his his crimeies. I don't need to know his gang. I know gangs and I know gang mentality and I know people who do gangster shit. A part of being a gangster is you don't care about nothing. You don't care about no rules. And you damn sure ain't about to watch your mans get molly whopped. I ain't in a gang and I ain't watching my mans get molly whopped. I don't care if he fighting a senior citizen. I don't care if he fighting a toddler or abroad. Let him start losing. I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in. I don't care. And here's the other thing. Here's a funny thing. I didn't watch fades. Where, where my people were winning and the gang still jumped in.
friend for no reason just to get their licks in because that's how they are. Yeah, you're winning the fight. They still uh, they still jump in just to get one in. That's how they are. You'd be a fool to meet up with a gang member and think you's about to shoot the fair one if you're not from his hood. Or unless your whole hood there and his whole, whole hood there, it ain't going to be a fair one. But guess what? If both y'all hood is there, nine out of nine, unless y'all are Latinos, unless y'all are Mexican gangsters, cholos, it's going gonna, it's gonna to escalate. It's going to escalate because the, the African-American gangs are too unorganized. They're disorganized. The hierarchy is not strong enough. If you read my book, The Black Box, you'll hear about when I had to catch this fade, actually two fades back to back in a Mexican neighborhood. You heard me? And it was so well regulated that we were able to shoot these two fades back to back. Nobody jumped in, no issues. And I'm not going to go through the whole story because it's in the book. But long story short, it was one dude because I told my man to take the second fade. It's a long story. And he was like, nah, 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 you got to take this fade. And he pulled out the chopper. And he was like, look, ain't nobody going to jump in. Everything's Gucci here, man. We got everything. Cir- yeah, yeah. Shoot that fade. Yeah, we, we, we regulate things around here. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful thing. Very civilized, very civilized. And they don't snitch like that, too. That's why I'm, I, I'm disgusted with Takashi. But see, that's L.A. Mexicans. I don't know what them New York Mexicans are off of because L.A. Mexicans ain't about to snitch. Not even they girl snitch. You dig? They girl get slapped around in the house. Nobody say nothing. Okay, Rakeley said, I thought the new black backpack briefcase was for real sold out. Glad to hear there's some left. I'm trying to give you some of my money. LOL, peace <laughs> to the saints. Peace I did saints. just update the listing and it's in the chat. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. I apologize. Carry on. I'm cutting you 90 miles from home. Call you ain't call got, call no call win. Do that you got no win. Don't do that here. Don't do that here. Call Hey, short. Hey, short. You ain't got no win out here. He's making a really important point, and this was the same point I had actually made about DJ Academics uh, some time ago when he was talking about like Flacco shouldn't mess with the sameness. And I was like, Flacco's in no jump at no jumper, no jumpers in LA, and and that's where I'm from. So what are you talking about? You from Jersey, man? Like you you too far away from home to be talking about affairs over here. Sit down and shut the fuck up. Uh, and I think that's what Wack is essentially telling Sharp right now, which is like, yeah, you might be from Dago. That's cool, man. That's cool. Uh, that's like two hour drive. OK, you in L.A. right now. So worry about what's in front of you because your, your people's two hours away. OK, uh, so we can put hands on you right here, right now. Now, here's the funny thing. Pacoima far as hell. In my opinion, Pacoima far as hell from L.A. Valley ass Nick carrying on. OK, we have Blake ordered the black backpack briefcase. Shout out to the ones that get drippy. And I do still have it listed as a pre-order, but they are on the way. So it's yep. you'll be they, getting them soon. They in customs right now. As long as Joe Biden don't throw no shots, we good to go. We have Daxon also ordered the black briefcase. Shout out to bosses and ballers. You ain't got to say who no you are. Call Dago. Out here. Call Dago. I'm a paru, nigga. I can't Call Dago, right nigga. Call Dago. Shout out to the homie uh, Slim 400, who's no longer with us. <laughs> and he said, I'm a pyro. I do what you won't do. <laughs> Shout out to Slim in a real way. He was a real one. You dig? And let me tell you guys something about real gangsters. Sometimes like the when you have people who are actually gangsters in the music industry, you got nerds who they love gangster music, but they don't actually love gangsters. You see, like I respect Suge Knight. I look at Suge Knight as the big homie because he always was a gangster. You dig? Like he said he was a gangster. He did gangster shit. I had to respect it. You know, squares and nerds when he's like, oh, he ran that guy over with a car. Yeah, that was his enemy. It get like that. That's what gang banging is about. If you read my book, the homie who was a G-A-N-G stir, he had said one time, he's like, yeah, niggas die. That's what gang banging is about. That's why I never became a gangster. I was like, God damn, that's not a game I want to play. That sounds uh, quite dangerous and fatal and unnecessary. Carrying on. You, blood. I want to get down. Call Act like I'm academics. Hey, I like that. I like that. Look, number one, he said, what's up with me and you? That's what we used to tell hoes back in the day. You dig? I remember being on the phone with a little bitty bitch. Hey, what's up with me and you, though? That's when you know she got a man. No, you're, you know she got a man. He ain't your homie. You don't know him. Hey, what's up with me and you, though? That's when you're trying to press that envelope and see what it really is. What's up with me and you, though? He didn't press this man like he's a thick hoe. <laughs> to- uh, it- whacked and told Shark, what's up with me and you, though? He said, I want to get out. Now, that's like some old old hood nigga talk right there. I want to get out. <laughs> that's what a, a, a old hood nigga say. Get out. <laughs> I remember that shit. Back in the day, we used to say, oh, he got chunkums. 
chunk him like me like he can fight that's some old school shit right there okay jose's back on cash app said can you do a review on that's like a bunch of letters and says guy on youtube please y'all gotta send these links by the way like to be honest with you i'm not like very uh well versed in terms of internet personality so often when you say like can you review x y and z you got to send the link uh, I just might not know what you're talking about. Okay, and then we have Kevin's back on Cash App and said, Suge beat up whites as well as blacks. Respect. Oh, Suge was a goon. Yeah, no, Suge was a goon. He was, uh, there was no limits on what he was willing to do. Oh, Piss, I'm a little nigga. Rock with him. I'm, I'm a beat your motherfucking face in, nigga. Do your thing. Thing. That's so violent. That's so violent. And that's anger right there. He said, I'm going to beat your face in. I, I've never even beat anybody's face in. Beat their face in. It's violent right there. I like it. I like it. He's serious. He's angry. He's mad right now. When another man tells you he's going to beat your face in, well, I would say you should take that as a threat, but it, it's unveiled. Yeah, I don't even need to say that. It should be obvious. But notice you hear WAC 100 hurling threat after threat at Sharp, but are there any threats being returned? Not a single one. That boy is quiet as a church house mouse. Me and you. Oh, What's up with me and you? I want to oh, get out. What's up with me and you? I got to get out. Nigga, what's up with me and you? Hey, shout out to Wack for being about his issue. He pressing that issue so hard. He's like, what's up with me and you? I want that pussy. I want that pussy. What's up with me and you? Ugh, make me feel like he pressing up on a bitch right now. And Sharp ain't trying to get that pussy up. Uh, Sharp's over here talking like a virgin. Go ahead, man. What's up with me and you? Well, okay, we run the page this morning. Thank you. What are we running it on? What? Oh, I like I like the sense of urgency and immediacy. He said, can we run the fade this morning? Like, like, look, man, I didn't just have my, my Wheaties. I didn't have some Captain Crunch. Let's run the fade now. I'm good. And then he and Sharp replies, where are we running it on? I I think, I think, using my skills of interpretation, I, I think he's saying, why would we fight? Which is a meaningful question to ask if you're a, a guy named, a white guy named Jared who works in accounting at a Fortune 1000 corporation. Well, why would you like to fight me, sir? I, I don't understand. Why, why should we come to blows over this minor misagreement, misunderstanding? Why? Uh, why would you like to fight me? Sharp just said, what are we run? What, what are we running it on? Let me rewind that so you can hear from his own mouth. Nigga, what's up with me and you? Well, okay, we run the fade this morning. Yep. What we running it on? What what dog, wherever you want me to be. You want me to what we running it on? Give me, give me your hey, Give me your real reason. Nigga, get a get a the people, your people, a reason of why we doing it. That was weird. So in the history of every hood. I'm sure it's hoods in Beijing, China right now. Hood niggas in Beijing, China then just watch. What the noise is going on? This one going on now. One joint going again. And what that translates to is this bitch ass nigga scared of the fate. Ain't nobody in the history of niggadom has ever said, well, why do you want to fight me if they wanted the fate? That's called escape language. That's I've only I've only ever heard this said by this girl in high school. Big old titties. Big titties. Light-skinned girl, pretty eyes, big old titties in high school. And these two ratchet, hair-hatted hooligans ran up on her like, bitch, you didn't da 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 And they were saying all these reasons as to why they wanted to fight. They're like, bitch, you fight me right now. And then the light-skinned girl with the big old titties. We all wanted to see them titties. We wanted to see the big milker chuggers. Oh, my gosh. And we knew we were never going to see them because... This is a hood school, right? And she was like a skater broad. You heard me? So even as a boss, the boss of the school, fly dude, hustler, dripped out. All the chicks wanted it. Except her, because she was like a skater girl. She's like a, a goth punk rock broad. So I was like, man, I ain't got a shot out here. So they done pulled up on her wanting to fade. And I'm sitting back watching it like a boss, like, Ugh, I should probably stop this. I should probably just intervene and stop this potential fade right here because these two dark-skinned, hair-hatted hooligans right here, low-key, they're jelly because she's a pretty light-skinned broad, and they're about to beat her nearly to death just because they're jealous. And they shouldn't be jealous because I love my brown skin, Jeremy. I like them from blue-black all the way through. I just love women, but but it's their self-hatred or making them hate on this broad and they are about to stomp her. They about to monkey stomp this broad into the ground. I should really do something. I should stop this. I got the power to do it. I could stop it with nobody make it happen. I could do it. Nope. Let's see the fade. This is the hood, bitch.
bitch. Let's see this fade. God damn it, I'm 16. I love watching fades. I love being in them. Let's see the fade. So anyways, Trevor said, did they fight? Nigga, this the hood. Hell yeah. Well, can you call it a fight if one person just gets demolished? <laughs> it was like a wrecking crew. Now, not only did they demolish her, the most beautiful thing happened. Do you know what this beautiful thing was? Yes, yes, that's right. Them titties came out. They was beating on her and ragdolling her, and they didn't try to grab her by her shirt and then pulled the shirt up. Bra came out, and them big floppy titties just spilled out, and everybody was like, ah, we been waiting. And it was almost a beautiful thing, except it was almost a beautiful thing, except them titties ain't had no, no nipples on them. You might say, Marquette, what are you talking about? The areola, it's weird. And I know you as a white person, you're thinking, Marquette, this doesn't make sense. No, I, don't, I don't know. She's very light-skinned. And the areola of the titty was like so light, it like blended into the titty. You ever seen something like that? No. The areola blended into the titty. So you couldn't really like see the areola. Those big titties. But I was like, where's the areola? Because I happen to like big nipples, big areola shout out to the ladies in the chat if you have a large areola just put an emoji in right now if you have a large areola put an emoji in okay kevin's back on cash and, app big and said when girls fight titties pop out they do especially if it's two hair-hatted hooligans that's steaming mad and taking out the vengeance of every dark-skinned girl who's had to wear a wig when she really just wanted that pretty hair to lay down like the light-skinned girls because she suffers self-hatred due to 400 years of tor tor torment at the hands of the enslaver and she took all that out on you you little mixed girl Yes, titties are definitely coming out. And them titties came out and they were big and floppy and nice and heavy looking. And they were they were large, but there was no areola and they did not have a big nipple. And I was extremely disappointed, but I was also glad that I never tried to put in the work to see those titties from natural causes. I never put in the work to see them for natural causes because then it would have been disappointed. Like, oh, this is what these titties look like. I didn't put in all this work and the titties look like this. I ain't with it. I'm mad. Matter of fact, I'm mad. I want a refund of my time. You come in my flow disrespecting my people, my nigga. Nah, nigga. You going to have some respect up the hill. disrespect you. I'm a real You're going to have some respect up the hill. Well, fuck disrespect. all that. But I this is what gang dudes do all the time because most of them is hoes anyways. So, look, this is what Wack did. A, a cat cast and tried this on me before you heard me they come up they won't smoke with you one-on-one -on -one, supposedly right supposedly but they they shook they don't really want the fair one because they know you're gonna put the beats on them and then so what they do is then they're like oh you disrespecting the hood you disrespecting the hood so they take it from being about a one-on-one -on -one issue from you disrespecting them now they externalize it to your disrespecting the hood and now that you're disrespecting the hood well the whole hood needs to factor into this fade so now it's you an individual against the whole hood but whack claimed that sharp was disrespecting don't disrespect my people yeah okay whack anyways this also happened to me i think this is also in the black box long story short it was some pussy ass nigga who's now dead by the way just side note he dead now um, there's a couple bitch ass niggas that had thought they had issues. They dead now. Um, there's this one bitch ass nigga thought he had an issue with me. And um, as soon as I asked for my fade, you heard me, I pushed the issue. I asked for my fade. Then he's like, Oh, you disrespecting the hood? No, I'm disrespecting you, my boy. Um, and then you know, things have to escalate and it gets so much more violent. That's why dealing with gang members is a, is always a problem. It, it can never just be a one-on-one -on -one fade, it always got to be the whole hood versus the whole hood. These dudes are scary ass clowns. Nine out of nine, they pussy. Not oh, still no. chatting, but not. Yeah, yeah, still chatting. Get him out of here, clown. Low self esteem ass. Anyways, carrying on. Hey, we broke. Oh, go ahead. Daxon bought the navy and white tie dye shirt on Man and Woman brand. Okay, I got that one. Shout out. That's so he he got one. the briefcase and then he just got the shirt. So he's papered up. Yep. Now you're gonna have some respect up in I here. Them what you was paying them, nigga. You're gonna have some respect. Hey, listen. So it seems like Sharp is going back to the origin of the issue, which I guess he had asked somebody how much they're getting paid. And I've actually mentioned this before. This is a very low class thing, which is to ask people about their income, their their savings, or what have you. Very low class. Poor people are 
fascinated with that which they don't have money you hear me and they want to know what you got and it's primarily for the purposes of jealousy for some reason they just want to inflame themselves and dive deeper into their jealousy but there's no logical reason that you should need to know how much someone else has in savings how much they're spending on something how much their car costs how much their house costs it's not your house, it's not your car, it's not your bank account. It shouldn't matter to you. And that's the problem is that low IQ, low income people, the reason they're in a low st status is because they're focused on irrelevancies. They're focused on your money instead of being focused on their money. Maybe if they focused on their money, they could get some. And so he asked a local ass question, which is not surprising. And that's why we are establishing global civilization and we're given these basics and how to operate in the world, which is number one, it's impolite to inquire about the finances of others. Not only is it impolite, it's irrelevant. And that's what he did. And it seemed like it set off WAC 100 and let that be a lesson to all of them. People don't like that. Y'all talk about I'm an employee, right? You See, so then WAC flipped the question on me. So you asking people how much money they make, but why are you, uh, he said, you ask people how much money they make, that's the issue. And then Sharp said, well, you can ask me how much money I make. And he said, well, we're not interested. We didn't ask you that. We don't care. So I think that's a good point. I agree with Wack here. Very reasonable. And ironically, all the people I know who are wealthy, they've never asked anything about finances. The only time anyone has ever inquired about finances has been like the financial solvency of one of my businesses. And this was a friend, not even people who invested in the company wanted to go super deep into the balance sheet. A buddy of mine asked me, and he was only asking so that he could hand me a whole stack of money. I believe in you, man. Keep going here. Real, real life. Yeah. But poor people don't ask you about your finances so they can slide you some, some stacks. They ask you about your finances so they can feel better about themselves. You, oh, he really ain't got it like that. You dig? It's a sad thing. You are. Ain't I? There you, you go. Are. Say what you feel. But we don't ask you without them paying you. Oh, nigga, well, so ask me. So let's be and you both get paid and run that this month. I got nigga. 50 on the pay, bro. Nigga. Ask me. I got 50. I don't, for what? Ain't our business. We don't give a fuck. Exactly. That is what Thank you care about, don't you? And that's probably one of the reasons Wack is a successful businessman. I respect that. You, you can't take that away from him. That's just the truth. And he got his eyes on the prize. He said, I'm not going to ask you about that because I don't care. But by the way, back to this fade. You see, uh, he didn't brought it back to like, what's up with them hands, though? And he's pressing that issue. And this is something a lot of these, uh, these, these gangster mentality folks will do. If they find weakness, oh, you didn't. <laughs> Look, you didn't made they day. No, they didn't sense some weakness. Now it's their do -do 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 -do. kill mode, blood and water. I'm a shark. Let's go. Hey, Donovan said, peace, Marquette, and peace to the saints. Black men are always lip wrestling, sending blind threats over the internet. Makes us look hyper emotional for no reason at all. Oh, yeah. They'd be lip wrestling, tongue, uh, jaw jacking and all that stuff. But here's the thing. I believe a lot of these folks are ignorant enough to engage in violence in person. And they're also ignorant enough to end up on that snake, <laughs> end up on that stand and start snitching on one another uh, like Gunna. And, you know, all the people who are participated in activities with Young Thug and Takashi Snitch Nine. Yeah. Yeah. They're dumb enough to, to say the threats online. They're dumb enough to deliver on the threats in person. And they're dumb enough to repeat what they did on stand. So it's just a cycle of idiocy. What can you do? They lack leadership. They need this ism. Nigga, no, we don't. Nigga, bro, that's all. Act, we do not give you no fucks about what die. Adam can you. you that's your business, man. Bro, exactly. you was never just about that though. You told me, nigga, that's so down, you can just go get the internet content, nigga. This is content. No, no. So the funny thing is that I'm asking myself right now, like, wow, why did Sharp even call in? Number one, and then number two, why did why didn't he just hang up? It appears that he's maybe trying to build up his own platform and stay cracking and stay kind of in the mix of things. And staying in the mix of things is sometimes going to get you in trouble. Uh, I'm an introvert. I'm not in the mix of things just because I don't really want to slap fives with people. I don't like being around people I don't know and don't trust. That's just my personality. Um, but it seemed like he's trying to really be outside with it. And, and that's one thing you got to know about these people. You know, what kind of people purport to engage in crime or criminal professions like saying being a drug dealer or a pimp? And then you go on and make a whole album about being a drug dealer, you dig? Or you, you go on and talk in front of a podcast in detail about being a pimp. You know, or you go on DVDs and documentaries, uh, all of them end up in jail. I mean, look at Gorgeous Dre. Yeah, he was really doing it, but he was also really doing time afterward. And so you have to wonder about these personalities. There are people who want to win 
and they really do, and they want to win on a consistent basis. And those are the ones who make their moves out of sight. You dig? But sometimes these people want to pimp on prime time, and that's the problem. That's why they end up in trouble. And it seems like this is a ploy for attention on both of their behalves, on Wax's behalf and on Sharp's behalf. These guys are entertainers. You dig? No, 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 no. Real nigga. I got you. You got look. I got fifty. Come on, we bro. just gonna get down. You ain't never bang my line, Fuck. nigga. We gonna act now. like we back in the mosh. Right you're talking about Jody. No, we gonna get out just because I'm a little nigga, right? That was hood. I appreciate that. Hey, Major Mind and Soul said Wack is treating Sharp the way Sharp treated Kelpie. Exactly. And you know what? I would say that the way Sharp treated Kelpie was unjustified because Kelpie's just a little kid, man, a little goofball kid trying his best to emulate what he heard on rap songs. And Sharp was somebody that Kelpie admired. So he could have really been a, you know, the big homie, but he didn't want to do that. Then in the case of this right here, this is a little different because Sharp says, hey, I'm a street and I GGA was happening. And then Wax says, oh, OK, yeah, me too. Let, let's go down that path. And at some point, you have to realize when you've kind of uh, you're, you're boxing above your weight class in a bad way. You heard me use a featherweight. You didn't step in there with them heavyweights and you're about to get your shit tipped. You dig? And it's OK to back down and say, you know what? I don't want this smoke, this smoke, this kitchen a little bit too hot. I'm going to make a grand exit. And that's why I'm proclaiming to everybody right now. I don't want any smoke. I don't want any fades. And I apologize. Whatever I said to offend you, I apologize. And I don't want any smoke, any fades, none of it. Okay. We have Francisco just bought the black briefcase. Shout out to Francisco. Shout out to the ballers. You dig. And shout out to the ones supporting the work. You know, uh, shout out to those supporting the work. Because these other guys can do reactions. They can't do analyses. Nigga, that's I'm talking shit out, though. That's we can get said. out just because. That's what you That's it. I love it. He said, I'm socking shit out. I love it. I love. I can't even lie to you. I love it. He said, I'm socking shit out. He mean that. It reminded me of one of my homies, Crazy Rob. He loved the fade. He prided himself on the fade. Called himself a knockout artist, you dig? He really prides himself on his fading abilities. Yeah. Said, I'm talking shit out. Okay, well, listen. That's what you said. Okay, well, listen. Like, that was a camp, right? well, look, what are we doing there? Adam Bob? Hey, he dog, I can hear Adam right he's now. He'll open it up in the back. See, that's one thing that you need to be uh, suspicious or cautious about are your relationships. You see, Adam is a, a demonic person who has no friends and no loyalty. So you have WAC 100 said, oh, I could call Adam and he could, he could give us an environment to shoot this fade in which is true. But if you were sharp, you would hope that that wouldn't be the case. And as much as if Adam provides the venue for this fade, Adam can't provide the security. He ain't going to provide backup. He ain't going to provide medical services after your ass gets stomped out by 10 damus. You dig? But Adam surely would set up the fade when you'd hope your homie wouldn't do that to you. But Adam's not his homie. You know, Adam might just be his business partner. Okay, speaking of Adam, we have an Adam came in on Cash Shop. He said, sending tuition. Shout out to the real ones. And we have MH said, peace to the saints. Looking forward to basic training this weekend and to help grow the SAS into the next level. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In a real way. Adam will open it up in the back, bro. Uh, I promise you I can call him right now. He's going to answer my call. Bro. Hurts. Mm -hmm. Go he ahead. got cameras. Bring it out. We All that. Our niggas going to kill this shit on my stage, homie. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, bro. You want to bring it to Adam, but you don't want to. No, bring that's it. his spot. He got the cameras. Do it. He I can go live. That is some real uh, police ass comment. He got the cameras. Uh, last I checked, every hood nigga on earth does not want cameras around. <laughs> you did. Oh boy, that's really sad and and weird. Number one. I also want to point out the slave mentality that you're observing here in WAC 100, which is to say that, yeah, Adam has the cameras. So let's go shoot the fade at his uh, studio and we'll let him record it so that he can make money off of us fighting. That's real. That sounds familiar. I forget what they used to call it, but uh, enslavers used to have like these Royal Rumble style bouts. They would blindfold young black boys and basically put like five or six of them in a, essentially a boxing ring and have them bare knuckle fight each other until nobody was uh, left standing. And they'd be whole crowds, you know, laughing and watching these minors, these children beat each other, uh, beat the snot out of each other, you know, 
for the entertainment of the enslavers. It happened a lot in the South. You can Google this yourself. And so he's basically saying like, yeah, um, we'll be two big bucks uh, that'll try to beat the crap out of each other for um, you know, the entertainment of the public while Adam sits back and makes a buck off of it. Shout out to Adolf22, got these NIGGA still working for you hundreds of years later. It's a, it's a beautiful thing if you're on the master side, right? As I always tell you, something will master, something will slave. And these fools have submitted to being slaves. And they're a slave primarily due to their own lack of intelligence. You dig? You know, if if uh, Wack was really smart, he'd say, well, if somebody's going to monetize it, it should be me, number one. But number two, if he was really smart, he wouldn't be trying to fight with his hands because that's the lowest form of warfare. You dig? As the Master Sun Tzu points out, the highest form of warfare is to attack strategy itself. See, strategy is not a tangible thing. Hey, I just put the basic training link to purchase a ticket. It is next weekend. So if anyone wants to come out to Las Vegas, That's right. meet other saints in person and go through training and education, you can get your ticket now. That's right. And link up with a real network of great men who are ambitious, educated, wealthy in every sense of the word. You dig only the real ones. That's why we ain't promote it because I don't want to I don't want people coming out who are casual fans. I, I want real ones out here. You dig. How you do it, bro? It's okay. Cool. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. Yeah, okay. You you're right, my nigga. You got it. That one, big dog. You okay. got it. Huh. Oh, now nah, he oh, big dog. Interview. You got that. Well, I sent a sleep friend there to get off for you doing the interview. Nigga, you better kick back, nigga, bro. Nah, bro. That was good. He said, you better kick back before I send somebody in there while you're doing an interview. He basically said, nigga, I send somebody up to your job, beat your ass while you on there, while you on there live recording. And here's the, the grimy part about it. We all know that if Adam got that footage of, of Sharp getting snuck or getting slept or getting molly whopped, that he would for sure put it out. <laughs> you did? Because if it pays, it plays. That's how Adam is. If it pays, it plays. Yes, indeed. That's why they set up that young boy Kelpie to get uh, punched on by um, suspect. Bro, 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 down bro down it's down above down your pay grade, down bro. Down you better down kick down back, down. bro. It's above your pay grade, bro. Hello. Yeah, above my pay grade. Are you? Yeah, it is. Hello. I'm not a manager, bro. It is, nigga. I'm not. I'm not. Manager. Manager. That's one I'm of my jobs, manager, bro. It's not what I do. What those likes look like, Saints? Let me know what them likes look like. And go ahead and send in your comments, questions as we wind down. And I want to see one person who's never supported. Hell, I don't even care if you send in your super chat to tell me why you haven't supported. Because I am curious. I am curious. And the only reason I say that is because as I've grown as a producer and as a man, I, I realize that you know, when you go to church, they don't keep the lights on with love. They keep the lights on with dollars. And so I learned very early on through tithing that you support the things that matter to you and your community. That's why, you know, people complain about the blacks or the Latinos or whoever not having enough of fill in the blank. That's because they don't support themselves. Men understand that you have to build for yourself. You have to sustain yourself. And colored people get conditioned to the government providing. They, they tend to think things are free when things are not free. Oh, man. They ain't hitting the like button. That's strange. That's really strange. What's going on in their heart and their mind? Tom said he'll be in Vegas the 18th to the 27th. So you're here during basic training. So if you want to join and meet people, purchase a ticket. Yeah, absolutely. Get your ticket. Uh, come kick it. You know, we usually go out and do something in the evening as well. It'll be a good experience. Britain Health sent tuition via Cash App. Shout out to Britain Health. That's one of my jobs. Right. I'm a label. Don King's job was that too. My I'm man. a label with that. Don King's job was that too. Oh, I don't know. This was weird. Like now he's talking about Don King. I'm going to just skip ahead a little bit. Colton sent a cash app as well. Said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Shout out to Colton. Yeah. And really a major piece of my work is to help you uh, recondition your thinking. And one of the things we'll be talking about at uh, basic training, among many other things, is one power talk. Not necessarily boss talk, but power talk. How do you utilize power talk to thrive in any type of negotiation? whether you need to intimidate, whether you need to do fill in the blank to achieve your goal in business, personal relationships, or romance. We're also going to be talking about power moves. What are the actions you can utilize to dominate? Power moves, activities. Huh? We're going to be going through a whole lot of things. It's going to be some real game, uh, a lifetime's worth. You dig? I know him personally. 
He, so you know what he did. I know that's that man right. business. But you don't care. Me. You mean, nigga? Do I get it? You ain't finna. You ain't finna water it down. W2? No oh, jumper is Adam Twenty Two. You, you are- so this is right now. They're basically arguing about who's a boss, who's not a boss, who's an employee, who's an independent contractor. Uh, this is all irrelevant stuff in the grand scheme. I think I see that. Adam's goal, excuse me, uh, Sharp's goal is to utilize Adam's platform to build up some of his own fame so that he can then transition that into maybe having his own podcast. I know he does have his own channel right now, and and that's a good thing. (laughs) Uh, This was from uh, from Bridget. It's a setting an example. It's a PayPal. I'll just say it's from. (laughs) It's a PayPal? Yeah, from someone that's ever sent one. Ah, yeah, I <laughs> got you, got you. Shout out. You did get a real way. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the work. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now, and I really am curious because, you know, I want to introduce people into a, a wealthy mindset. And one thing, and I've been poor, probably poorer than most of you who are watching. Like I've been actually homeless. You hear a lot of entrepreneurs say that they've been homeless and they're lying. Like, for example, Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V, he's one of the greatest frauds on the internet. This fraud motherfucker basically came from a family uh, where his dad was a successful entrepreneur and gave him a business. And then he acts like he like somehow figured all this stuff out. And I want to teach it to you because I figured this out. Yeah, you ain't shit, bro. You followed your pop's footsteps and your daddy's wine company is now your wine company. And you basically already started off with a major uh, major intellectual, educational, experiential head start. And now you're trying to act like you figure something out. The fucking biggest fraud on the internet. Fuck Gary V. He's a fucking lying nerd. Okay, we have Tommy second to none said first time supporter. I have been watching your lives for three months, but I've been struggling to mentally get up mentally get up so you think that means like in the sense of like get to work like yeah. for for his toward his goals yeah mm. okay huh keep watching yeah 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 that's true i mean my first thing i would encourage you to do is expose yourself to a lot more of the great things in life that you could have, even if you can't actually put your hands on it, but you could actually um, see it online and know that, know what's possible because most people have never been in a hotel suite that has a personal swimming pool, like meaning it's a a full-size swimming pool, but it's in a hotel suite or a gym or a spa, like a full-size freaking sauna and steam room in a hotel suite. And one of the things that I do, like, for example, at my last conference, I had guys go to my presidential suite and it was just like, what? And I think it lit a fire in them to know, like, dang, like, I didn't know people are living like this and this is everyday stuff to them. And it it showed them that they could drive for greater things. Not that you necessarily want that, but you want to get exposed and see what's out there. And also, I want to encourage you to figure out what money means. A lot of people talk about being a millionaire. They don't know what a millionaire lifestyle looks like because they don't even know what a hundred thousand dollar lifestyle looks like. So how are you making thirty thousand dollars a year talking about being a millionaire? It's too big of a gap. You can't understand it. I don't even set month long goals anymore. I don't set six months goals or one year or five year goals. It's too far. I only understand twenty days out. That's all I can hold in my mind is about twenty days out. So I want you guys to be able to get a sense and make things real for you because when it's real, that's when you go for it. When you say a millionaire, but you still live in an apartment that's like a, you know 90 square meters or what's a normal apartment size? I don't even know because you hear me, I don't even know. But you still live in a rat trap in Brooklyn, but you're talking about being a millionaire. You need to fill in some of those steps. And when it becomes more real, then you're actually going to get to work on that. And I also want you guys to understand that as a business guy, you got to think in terms of investment. To invest, you got to give up the dollar so that it could go work for you. You have to get in the mindset of being willing to give up a dollar so that it can go work. You hear me? Saving the dollar, that's letting it sleep. You need it working. And one thing I can tell you is even when I was dead, broke, poor, there was a time I couldn't afford to get a a hamburger at In-N-Out Animal Style. You hear me? I had to just get the regular one because I had an extra dollar 37 real life. What I learned is when I was on my bounce back to be able to give out a dollar to someone felt good to me because it 
it let me reminded me psychologically that I have enough. Just being able to give one dollar to someone else let me know that I have enough. You see what I'm saying? So it's a psychological thing. Yes, you're doing a good thing for someone else but you're doing something better for yourself. That's why when they say to give is to receive, you need to understand how to drive your own psychology. Let's get back to this one. Go ahead. Hey, we have the rap coach that the black box and your YouTube channel have been life-changing for me. I want to see you win saints. I appreciate that. I linked that. the black box, the Amazon copy that you can purchase in the chat. Absolutely. We have St. DX said tuition. Haven't caught a live in a while. Well, welcome back. And on cash up, we have Esteban said peace to the saints. Shout out to Esteban. Was that the Esteban we, we at met the conference, at the yeah. conference? Shout out. You see, and, and what I do is radically different from these guys on YouTube. You know, you have psychotic haters who are just going to hate because that's what they do. They ain't got nothing good in their life, so they got to hate. But the difference is the people in my chat, when I hear their names, I know their faces. I've shook their hands. I know about their lives. I know about their families. I know about their pursuits, their goals, their dreams, and their progress, most importantly. That's the difference. There's, there's another mentally ill hater <laughs> saying you're broke because you can't afford to put an extra dollar on a burger. I don't, what? it's not proper English. Oh, his English is bad. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. <laughs> OH is back with more tuition. Shout out to OH. Careful. Do I get a W2? It's owned by no jumper. Okay, do I get a what W2? Adam from 22. What do Stop I, do I get? See, right now, like Sharp is basically arguing, and Wack is pointing out that you're not a boss. You are working for a guy who is a boss, he's your boss. And then Sharp is basically working through mental gymnastics when really the answer is correct. You're correct. I'm not a boss. I'm under Adam 22. And here's something that I can bless you guys with, which is it's okay to not be a boss. Not everyone's going to be a boss, but some people are bosses and they're called ballers. Shout out to baller alert. This is St. City, Joshua. Yiddy. He said, can't make the boot camp. I'll be in Cali for work. Good luck to the saints attending as a veteran. Three months boot camp changed my life. Also, I'm an escrow for an investment property here in Vegas. Hello. Cash flow is on point. Peace Hello. to the saints. Hello. Hello. Boss talk. We have Donovan is back and said, attitude of gratitude. It is better to give than to receive. My greatest success is determined by my level of service to others. Mm. And I don't want to say it's greater uh, to give than to receive, but in giving, you are also receiving. And then Austin came in by a cash app. Shout to Austin. Can't can't say that then. Is that his can't platform? That. Is you that Adam's platform? You, you, you probably get a 1099. You know that. But this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. I call Adam. He gonna right. turn the cameras on. He open the gate. Right did I show you? Hey, did I not show can, you? Love? Can we put the fifty up did for I the not swap? Show you love? Yeah. So here's a summary. Uh, WAC 100 has been punking Sharp for about six minutes straight, and Sharp has not accepted any invitation for a fade. He's not said one thing aggressive or negative to or about WAC 100. Has been completely one sided and aggressive. At this point, you could even say that WAC 100 is bullying Sharp. And this is a radically different posture than what you observe with Sharp talking to broads or talking to uh, little white kids from Orange County. Um, this is a different Sharp now, isn't it? And that's one thing you got to understand about humankind is that you know, sometimes somebody might look like the big, ba big bad wolf until they come up against a bigger, badder wolf. And that's when we find the measure of a man. And, you know, even myself watching this interview, I'm trying to take some lessons. And one of the lessons is like, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and say, I'm scared of everybody. I don't want no smoke, no beef, because I'm not trying to get caught in this situation. Like, Sharp, this should look bad, look hey, bad, bad. John Carlos said, peace to the saints. Needed to hear that my money needs to get put to work. Absolutely. And that's one of the things, you know, the last guy who just sent in a baller alert, he just pointed out how he's putting his money to work. He just got an investment property in Las Vegas. Oh, and by the way, Las Vegas is a great market for real estate. Um, the place where uh, down by the strip where I have a two plate had two places at, they got a new stadium. That's a stadium that they're putting up there, right? That that dome shaped thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what the heck it is, but the point is they're building. And anytime a place is building this rapidly and you're building so many entertainment places, you're bringing in new hockey teams, new basketball teams, new football teams, you're increasing everyone's prof, uh, 
uh, property value. You're also increasing the job market, which means you're going to drive in new uh, increased population, which means greater demand for real estate. So he's smart. He's putting his money to work. That's the whole point. But the sad thing is poor people, if you were raised with poor parents, what do they teach you? Hold on to your money, save your money, be miserly. And that's the complete opposite of having an abundance mindset and knowing how to put a dollar to work as an investment to grow it. Trevor said he encourages everyone to cop Tyshawn Sass and Varsity Jacket. It's extremely player and super comfortable. He said he has one in red and soon will have black. So Trevor actually has Justin's red one and he's getting Tyshawn's black one. Ah, okay. So there's two different ones. They come in red and black. You can look them both on sassandbrand.com. And I've had both of them and I can say that they are both very high quality. These are these are two guys. I don't produce this product. You hear me? I, I let guys will do a consultation on marquetism.com. We'll talk about, you know, ideas. We'll, you know, if they have a product idea, then they'll we'll run with that. And I'll teach them how to go through that whole process from ideation to prototyping to negotiating contract, getting a bulk order. And then I help you by platforming you and helping you with the marketing as such. And then you get all the money. Oh, and I even give you my brand, which I'm not licensing. Most times you have to pay a licensing fee for this kind of a thing. And I'm doing that at zero dollars and they make the money and both of these guys have made really high quality products so shout out to them okay we have victor said peace to the saints tuition sharp should have read chapter two of the black box swing first period and and that applies no matter who you're going up against you could be going up against easy work you could be going up against a bully swing first number one but and, and check this out when you swing first oh they're gonna respect it you dig they're gonna ease up a little bit when you swing first but here's the thing Sharp ain't swinging at all. And what happens is when a bully encounters you and you're not willing to fight back, it emboldens them, makes them more aggressive. Now you're more likely to get bullied and to get hurt. It's a sad thing. Hey, um, we got a Venmo. <laughs> okay. And he said, Sunday's tuition, cash has been down, and I think you know the amount. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Shout out to the Saints. Very consistent with the support. Do appreciate it. And PayPal, we have Walter said, intermittent YouTube listener due to delivering pizzas on a bike DC as a side job wow. on top of being a mechanical engineer and child support 2,900 per month kicks my ass. Whoa. She will need more money after that. Let, let me, uh, let me advise you saying, um, presuming that your child support is, uh, calculated based on your, your earnings, which are identified within your tax documents whether you're a W-2 employee or what have you, uh, what you would be wise to do is find a way to receive your income uh, within businesses and then you know, take your expenses as business expenses mostly and then limit your income base as low as possible, You know, around like you know, 28,000 a month. Put yourself under the poverty line and basically uh, starve that hoe. Carrying on. Right? Not the child. You're going to starve that hoe because she the one getting all that damn money. Yeah, we Can put, we put the 50 a squabble? Oh, now you want to put the 50 up for the squabble. Me ain't nothing but 50, bro. That's you said I was an employee. Bro. Sharp, he asked for a fade. What are you talking about, employee? He asked for a fade, Sharp. I wish a, a, a ghetto black girl was there to instigate this. Sharp, you scared. I wish a little ghetto black girl was there. Here's the thing, Sharp. Now you've been exposed. You've been exposed, right? Basically, you got punked in front of everybody. And uh, I think that we've all heard this primarily because of DJ Fatademics. DJ Fatademics put it on his website and that benefits him because he's had an issue with uh, Sharp. And DJ Fatademics is very feminine in his approach in that he's scared to go man to man because he knows he's too weak to win at that. So he tries to find other people to fight on his behalf. Notice how feminine this is. Here's a reminder. In my book, The Black Box, there's this one super turbo thick black chick. You hear me? Her face was all right. Wasn't really there. She was dating this gangster, but she really wanted to mess with the big homie. You dig? And so she kept coming at me. And then I was telling her, no, nah, I can't mess with you. So she got mad. And instead of coming man to man, being that she's not a man, she went and got a man huh? who's bigger and stronger and can fight on her behalf. So she got her brother, who's a gang member, uh, to come, you know, take up the issue with me. And he did. <laughs> Shout out to him. Point is, that's the same thing that DJ Fatademics is doing. He went and go get WAC 100 to take up the issue on his behalf. You heard WAC 100 mention academics during this talk. Oh, and who po uh, posted up this video ASAP? DJ Fatademics. You don't see the, the plays at hand right here? Yes, indeed. 
Bro, listen. Like, man, I, I said we, I was an employee. Can we put the 50 up? Go prove up and say that I'm an employee. Can we Maybe put we the 50 up? We all know that. Show, show that I get a W. No jumper was show, there before you. Show, It'll be the, I, it is this platform. That's yes, I have nothing. You're right. I'm barely hanging in. But what I'm but saying it, is I'm you said I was a little in. nigga. Number one, uh, shout out to Sharp. And this is, you know, common among uh, someone who be in a profession like a P is that they have good mouthpiece, they have their wits about them, and he's able to try to shift the narrative away from throwing hands and move the neighbor, uh, the narrative toward, you know, money and who's a boss, who's an employee, because he doesn't want to talk about throwing hands, because really that's nothing to talk about. That's something to show up about, you dig? And he don't want that. And so Wack is winning this whole thing because he gets to continue to further aggrandize himself as the ultimate gangster. And he also gets the, you know, I don't know how you get paid on Clubhouse, but he gets the clout, if nothing else. And that seems to be really important to these guys. I'm, I was I'm a little nigga. nigga in the building. Okay, so what I'm saying is I could call Adam. I'm sweating to God. You call him. You open the gate, right? Mm -hmm. He'd turn on all the cameras. Since you say I'm a little nigga, let's go. Let me I take offense. Yeah, I never called you, nigga. That's what you want to take it as. But I'd rather Am I just say it. Did I hear this is. nigga call me? You're right. That's right. what he that, said. That, what you That's exactly. Okay, now this is where all the little underlings come into the conversation. I find this to be comical as well, but I can't hate it. You heard me. If that's your man's right for your man's. And that's one thing that I absolutely uh, teach. And But there's something much deeper than that. And, and I'm going to go through this as well at basic training, which is the understanding of like, what is female culture? What is male culture? The culture around being a male and growing into a man and similar with a female. And how do we get socialized into that over time? Also, how does that map onto corporate culture, which is to say, how do you appropriately exercise male culture within the corporate structure so that you might get promoted, for example, or get more money, for example? or be able to pull boss moves within that environment, for example. So we're going to go through all that at basic training. It'll be a great education in terms of business and operating in society. Because a lot of us have missed out on that natural education. And I might even allow folks to watch uh, via live stream. Obviously, you'd have to pay for that because people are paying to be there in person. Um, but I might do that, which will be unprecedented. None of our uh, our conferences in the past. This is not a conference, it's a basic training, but none of the times we've allowed for a, a live stream. So we might do that. EJ sent a PayPal. He said, scared money, don't make money. Peace to the saints. Precisely. And you also have to throw in the piece about dumb money. You dig? Uh, you always have to, in life, you need to be brave, but you also need to be informed. And that's one of the most important things is that you want intelligent decision making and then go for like a fearless lunatic once you got a plan together. We have Altitude came in on Cash App. He said supporting the work. Shout to Altitude. Carry on. And these are all familiar faces. Yeah. He said, he said that. I called no nigga. You called me a little nigga. So I said, nigga, nigga you're boy, small. Man. We're that, both. He said you ain't like that. We're nah. Nah. Nigga. Nah. nigga, we're both small. That's nah. Nah. Wow, you damn talk about backpedaling. This this man sharp then went to the whole thing of we're both small. You call me a little nigga, and, and I I said we're both small. Like he now explaining himself. Good lord, it's like a little kid brought before the principal's office. <laughs> Yikes! He a fake pimp, right like here, fake. Bro, y'all acting like I'm five eight two four big shit. <laughs> he said I'm five eight two forty. Two forty. That's a lot of weight on a five eight frame, because two forty would be a lot of weight on a six foot frame. And even when I was just covered in muscle in high school, um, you know, coming in as like a, you know, a freshman or 10th grade, I didn't get up to 240. That's a lot of weight. I don't think that that weight is in muscle in the case of WAC 100. Hey, 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 I promise you, y'all acting like I'm a nigga that don't make content too. Y'all think that y'all can take the word. Man, please go here. Y'all had it. Nigga. Okay. I got them. Can I get this? That was it. <laughs> Gang shit right there. He said, y'all go ahead. Y'all can have this little nigga. That's gang shit right there. That's what the big homie say. Hey, bro, you ain't even on my pedigree. Hey, uh, little homie, take him out. I'm going to just sit back. Go ahead. Tune him up real quick. That's sad. 
pussy ass motherfucker. Hey, 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 can I get this pussy? Can I get this pussy? Let me get this guy. Let me get this guy. Let me get this guy. First off, I don't know whose voice that is, dude. Sounds like a, a super cornball. Can I get this baby? Can I get this? Man, if you don't shut your dumb ass up and sit down somewhere, who, who is this dude? Does anybody know his name? Who is this guy? <laughs> hey, Shark, Shark, you a two-bit pimp. You a two-bit Who is this man using movie lines? This dude is like talking like a, a, an a Italian, uh, what are they, a Guido. Hey, hey, Sharp, hey, Sharp, you're a two-bit pimp, eh? Shop, you're a two bit pimp, man. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this boy? This is great. Pimp, shark. You're a two bit pimp. Right. You know what happens in prison of pimps? You guys get beat the fuck up because you get an R in your jacket now. That's what happens to pimps. You get a- That's not true. So you're lying, buddy. Uh, number one, you get beat up and, and finessed and intimidated and blah, blah, blah in prison for a variety of reasons. But it all comes down to you being weak, whether it's physically weak or financially weak. One or the other or both. But just being a pimp is not going to get you beat up in the pen. That's a straight up lie. Um, now, in the case of you catching, you know, you going down for you know, trafficking of children, of minors, then, yeah, you're going to have major issues in the penal system because they tend to not like chomos and they don't like people who abuse children. And in some cases, they don't like people who have abused women. That's true. But just being a P, no, nah, that's not the case. So he, he's lying about that. But we, we don't carry out. The R on your fucking jacket. When Whenever you want to. Whenever yeah, you want to. Whenever you want to do it. You won't put the 50 up. You won't put the 50 up. You a pimp. Now this got weird. It's like, why do we need fifty thousand dollars to to fight all of a sudden? <laughs> You're right, Donovan. He is that that instigating black chick, ain't he? <laughs> a little broad. Now it's strange too because these are all hood dudes, right? These are street dudes. I didn't beat people up for 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 the zero. You heard me for the low. Yeah, yeah, just for zero dollars, the free 99. How is it all of a sudden you're a gang member, but you need $50,000 to shoot the fade? Come on, man. What are we talking about here? This is just silliness. This is so commercial. You were a pimp. You were a broke-ass pimp. You had to leave your job. You had to leave your job to become a motherfucking podcaster because you can't pimp no more. You had to leave your job to become a I'm not going to lie. That's funny. <laughs> like, to me, that's funny. He said you have to leave your job. He said job like pimping is like a, a, a formal profession <laughs> that you go to school for. You have to leave your job. <laughs> he, <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, that's number one. The number two, he points out something that's possibly factual, which is to say that you know, if you was making so much money with the pimping, uh, why are you a podcaster? And I'm not going to you know disrespect the dead, but he ain't the only one that claimed to be a P, but seems to be podcasting more than anything there's a lot of people in in other legitimate professions i also ain't gonna name no names on these internet guys but one of them says he has this this meaningful profession but he's live more than i am i'm like damn how you got time to do all that huh podcaster because you can't pimp no more sharp you can't fuck with us sharp you ain't sharp enough you ain't sharp enough you ain't sharp I like he he, he was zo- this boy zooted up he'd been listening to this whole conversation just ready to get in like a little pit bull we have Tazier said, first time tuition sender as well. Been watching since the St. Pity Pod- St. City podcast days. Wow. Have missed some lives recently due to underperformance in college. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for supporting the work. And that's back in the day. <laughs> you mess with that St. City podcast. Uh, one thing I really do want to encourage you to do, because my business has been helping students be successful in college through leveraging technology. Uh, there's kind of two things uh, that are critical for you. Hopefully you're already you know, correcting course. But number one is showing up is half the battle. You know, all the data indicates that if you actually show up to every single class session in person, you're going to be way more successful than not showing up. That's number one. The number two, every college has student support services. Student support services, this umbrella means that they have you know, math tutoring, chemistry tutoring, and these things are generally all free. I highly recommend that you take your assignments in there. You take your study materials in there. You learn how to study if you don't know. And you spend as much time in that library as possible. I really do uh, wish you much success because over a lifetime, people who have a college degree will make a million dollars more on average than those who don't. So wishing you much success. And shout out to CB supporting the work as well. Sharp enough to yeah, fuck with us, Sharp. Tell me who that happened. You ain't sharp you enough to fuck with us, Sharp. Respect happen. for your own you, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Todd, Todd, Todd. He can't fuck with us. He can't.
Now, it's funny how you got peons, nameless peons now who talking about he can't mess with us. How did this become a us? It was a one-on-one -on -one thing. It was between Sharp and, and Fat No 100 <laughs> and Fat 100. It, it was not between us. You're a peon. Nobody knows your name. Nobody cares who you are. And you've been zooted up for 10 minutes watching these two broads argue. And you've been practicing your catchphrases. Sharp, you ain't sharp enough to fuck with us. Like, okay, bro, you said it three times. You said it three times. It was cool the first time, but don't repeat that shit. Like, nobody reacted. It's okay. It gets like that. Come up with your next clever zinger. Saint CB said, "Peace to the saints." Peace to the saints. I mean, I can't see this like, but he's gonna be our content. He's gonna, he's gonna be our good little bitch on Clubhouse. He's gonna be our good little bitch on Clubhouse now. Nah, this dude sound like he was the booty bandit in jail. <laughs> he said he said that like he said that in a weird way. He'd be our good little bitch on on Clubhouse. He'd be our good. He he always says this shit two times. This man got call him Tony two times. He he does talk like a Guido. Hey, Tony two times, eh? Tony two times, yeah. Sharp, you're nothing but a two-bit hustler. <laughs> this is great. Now, this dude be clapping dude's cheeks in the pit. You can be our good little bitch on a clubhouse. Who who says that, bro? Like, you super weird. And and why do grown men use clubhouse anyway? Yeah, we don't make him our good little bitch on clubhouse. Listen, listen. He fake like his mic was moody. He couldn't hear nothing with shit that real. He trying to cross fish his way out. He been ducking, he been ducking and motherfucking diving and doing fucking carnival talk. Man, he coming over here disrespecting him. I let him have a conversation. I slap the shit out of Sharp. Watch this here. Listen, listen, two hours of look, is this conversation that got so disrespectful? This conversation that got so disrespectful. This man that said, I slap the ish out of Sharp. And we all know. When a man says that he's going to slap you as opposed to punch you or choke you out, that's like saying you're not going to do anything back. It's the ultimate disrespect because it's saying you're like a broad. Be, and even broads nowadays, they go throw hands with you, especially these black Serena uh, Williams looking ones that look kind of like not a woman. But anyway, it's carrying on. Go. We just had a conversation on this nigga. I you don't know. Don't shut up, stupid nigga. Yeah, shut up, shut up, bitch. Nigga, I asked you to break your jump. You did not. Shut your bitch ass up. Wow. He said, shut up, bitch ass nigga. Wow. No, this is too disrespectful. No, no, no. This is too disrespectful. Good Lord. This is, it's actually, it's hurtful. At this point, it's hurtful. It's hurtful. I almost feel bad just watching it. It's like they're they're bullying them now. They're teaming up on them. No, you did, a a shut up. Shut up. You, you, you ain't got no voice. You're a bitch. Right, a nigga yeah, ask you what's up. A nigga violent shit break your jaw. If you play like they ain't heard what he said. Nigga, not even that. They should too much. Hey, I ain't going to lie to you. You called that bitch, boy. You called it. Shut up. Hey, didn't I tell you this this morning? Bitch, you been on the line. You dump that ass nigga. Yeah, ain't nobody fuck with you, time. pussy. Oh, I see what you, we seen your kind before. Don't nobody I else come. You come in because you fuck with each other, you bitch I ass nigga. Shut up. Shut up. Listen, sweat. that fight's still on Got the line. No yeah, that's crazy. The fight's still on the line. That fight's. Dang. That was bad. That was bad. I'm going to go ahead and say um, Sharp got exposed there. Wow. And admittedly, he never claimed to be a gangster. I don't think he's ever claimed to be like a, an extraordinary fighter or anything like that. But right there, it was just a situation of your dignity being taken. You know what I'm saying? Your dignity. Wow. That was tough. Saints, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to send in your comments, questions as we wind down. That was so disrespectful. That was, whew, that was hard to listen to. It was funny at times. It was funny at times. I'm not going to lie to you. Let that be a lesson to all of us. When it's time to bow down, just bow down. Good Lord. And, and don't try to, to fake it, right? Like, don't try to take the, you know, I'm going to walk out of this with my chin high. No, like, you don't want the fade. Just say, you know what, uh, uh, hamburger face, you got me here. You're more of a gangster than I am. You're much better connected. You probably could get me touched. I'm going to throw the towel in on this one. You got that. I'm going to just stick to this podcast and then talking about this pimping. That's what I know. That's what I do. I don't want to get involved in none of that gangster shit and none of that other shit. You know, you won that one. I'm done. Hey, it was nice talking to you guys. I'm going to get off the phone now. That probably would have been the best exit. Low key. That would have been the, the most civilized, respectable, honest way up out of it. But instead, he just kept, uh, you know, babbling and, and tap dancing. And, you know, let me pray that I am 
humble enough uh, when if that situation ever were to fall upon me that I could say, you know what? You got this one. I'm going to bow out. Goodbye. Joe writes, should a man fight a superior opponent even when there's no chance of winning? See, I think, one, you got to adjust mentality because there's always a chance of winning. And maybe there's not, but in my mind there is. I've never looked at a man of any size and ever thought I can't win. I've never one time done that. I have looked at a guy and said, you know what? It looked like I might need to cut a smile under your neck. Because, you know, if we just shoot it from the shoulders, it's going to be a little difficult. I'm going to need to cut a smile under your neck. Or I looked at a guy like, for sure, you're going to need the clapper. Or I looked at a guy like, hmm, what in this environment could I pick up and bang against your head? But I never looked at a guy like, no, nah, I can't win that. I've even looked at guys who are big and I'm like, you know what? I almost want the fade just to see what it do. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you big, but I don't think you's a savage. So I think number one is to deal with your mentality, which is that you have to believe that you, there's always a way to win. And there is, because here's the thing, they're a human being. And I've been, I didn't see so many fades, you heard me, where the big guy didn't win or the, the tough looking guy wasn't as tough as we thought he was. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of that. So I already know what this is really about. So I've never, ever, ever, ever like, oh, I can't win this one. No, 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 no. <laughs> Give me a hawk. Hear me. Uh, let that burner come out. Oh, yeah, we can always win. And I've never been of the mindset. You got a lot of nerds who say things like, oh, you know, he pulled out a gun or he pulled out of this or a knife or a weapon. That's not that's not honorable or like that's not how men do it. No, the goal is to win. Winning is everything. So if they had to win with a fist, with a knife, with a gun, uh, with a fiber wire, with a, a, a sucker punch, whatever it was, a W is a W and I ain't taking nothing else. OK, so if you ever want to come at me, just know everything's on the table for me because I'm not willing to lose. I'm not down for that. I'm only down to win. So if you want to submit yourself to the things that I might do to you, be my guest. And that's how I was brought up. And that's how I'm going to live. And that's how I'm going to die. OK, we have Sorrow said Sharp messed up by going into Wax territory. Wack is always on Clubhouse and got his little booty bandits on call. Sharp should have just Sharp should have just not fed into it and left from the start that's correct you know and there's a lot of lessons about this internet game because everything you do requires some level of expertise if you want to thrive in it and sometimes you go up against people who have superior know-how and superior expertise in a particular domain for example you know a lot of these internet dudes that even that i've engaged with like i've learned things in engaging in skirmishes against them that i didn't know about youtube because if it was like something like on the streets, like in person, they would never have a chance at winning. But since it's on YouTube and they've been on YouTube for 10 years, like they know all the, the tricks and the tips and and they can win. And that's correct. He went on to foreign soil and he got destroyed by the people who view that soil as, you know, native, their native land. You dig? And that's why the master Sun Tzu says, avail yourself to local guides which is to say when you're on foreign soil, talk to people who know that soil to figure out how it operates. And he didn't do that. Okay, we have Trevor. He said supporting the work. Appreciate it. Shout out to Trevor and the real ones who really do support the work. Let's carry on. All right, all right. Well, Saints, I'll give you some time to send in your comments, questions as we wind down. It's been a pleasure to have this time to kick a little bit of game with you have some fun, learn some lessons. And I just also want to make a disclaimer. Uh, WAC 100, if you're, oh, we actually should have went through those comments because some of them comments was just funny as I don't know what. Some of those comments were hilarious. Um, but I just want to say WAC 100, um, on behalf of Sharp, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Sharp's been bullied enough. He's been bullied enough. That was unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Hate to see him get done like that in public. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> Good Lord. Saints, let us end this with our tradition. Creed of the Assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The Creed of the Assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I'm going to strive every moment 
to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace of the saints.